your armed forces have never and shall never let you down a coup d'etat known more simply as a coup is the seizure and removal of a government and its powers it comes from the french phrase meaning a stroke of state or blow of state these transfer of power are illegal and often violent the transfer of power is typically given to a political faction, rebel group, the military or a dictator. We know many of these dictators. Well, Adolf Hitler, Muammar Gaddafi, Francisco Franco, Idi Amin and many more. In recent times, there have been military coups in Pakistan and Niger. Here's a look at some history-changing military coups and the men who led them. Napoleon Bonaparte in October of 1799, when Napoleon Bonaparte returned from an Egyptian military campaign, he began scheming to overthrow the five-member directory that ruled France. With the support of several high-level co-conspirators, Napoleon arranged for a special legislative session outside Paris on November 10th. He tried to cajole the legislature into putting him in charge. The lower house instead bombarded him with abuse, chanting, down with the dictator. He was chased out of his chamber but he managed to convince a small, hand-picked group of legislators to abolish the directory and appoint him to a consulate. Quickly becoming the first consul, Napoleon completed his consolidation of power. In 1804, he crowned himself the emperor. Francisco Franco When a leftist coalition won the Spanish elections in February of 1936, General Francisco Franco was packed off to a remote post in the Canary Islands. But on July 18th, Franco broadcast a manifesto imploring the military to overthrow the democratically elected government. As army garrisons all across Spain responded to his call, he secretly flew from the Canary Islands to Spanish-controlled Morocco. There he took charge of the battle-hardened troops already stationed there. The coup attempt was only partially successful, leaving Franco's rebels in control of just one-third of the country. But this started a bloody civil war that lasted three years. In the end though, Franco emerged victorious. With the support of fascists, monarchists, the landed gentry and the Catholic Church, he ruled as dictator of Spain until his death in 1975. Muammar al-Qaddafi Born in a tent to illiterate Bedouin parents, Muammar al-Qaddafi grew up hating the Libyan monarchy and its Western supporters. When he turned 27, the junior army officer decided to seize power himself on September 1st of 1969. King Idris was out of the country at a health resort at the time. Driving military vehicles into the cities of Tripoli and Benghazi, he and about 70 co-conspirators surrounded the royal palace and other government buildings. They cut communications and arrested top officials. Within two hours, the more or less bloodless coup ended. In a radio address, Gaddafi informed his countrymen that the corrupt and reactionary regime had been toppled. Ruthlessly stifling dissent and constantly clashing with the United States, Gaddafi went on to rule Libya for 42. He was finally killed during the 2011 Arab Spring uprising. Idi Amin From humble beginnings, Idi Amin rose through military ranks to become Uganda's top general. Though originally a close ally of President Milton Obote, the two men eventually began to distrust each other. On January 25, 1971, while Obot was away, Amin moved troops into Kampala, the capital. Firing automatic weapons and mortars, Amin's men quickly took possession of the airport and other strategic sites. After that, they announced their successful coup over the radio. Despite a promise to restore democracy, the self-proclaimed last king of Scotland went on to rule Uganda as a dictator. He killed some 300,000 political opponents over the course of his eight-year reign. He was finally deposed by Ugandan exiles and Tanzanian soldiers and lived out the rest of his life in Saudi Arabia, never facing charges. Pakistan of 1999 The 1999 military takeover in Pakistan was a bloodless coup initiated by the military staff under the leadership of General Pervez Musharraf. The instigator seized control of the civilian government of the publicly elected Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on 12th October of 1999. Two days later, General Musharraf, acting as the country's chief executive, issued a controversial provisional order that suspended the constitution of Pakistan. Martial law was declared due to the breakdown of civil-military relations. Within hours, army commanders took control of all key government institutions throughout the country. They placed Sharif and his administration, which included his brother, under house arrest. 
military police took control of the state broadcaster radio and the entire communications infrastructure they announced that sharif had been dismissed the supreme court of pakistan led by chief justice irshad hasan khan validated the martial law under a doctrine of necessity Sharif was tried by the Judge Advocate General Court and convicted of endangering the lives of all passengers aboard the aircraft carrying Musharraf. On 10th December 2000, Musharraf unexpectedly issued a pardon to Nawaz Sharif to be flown to Saudi Arabia. In 2016, Musharraf confessed in an interview that he pardoned Sharif from life imprisonment on the request of King Abdullah. In 2001, Musharraf issued the executive decree and eventually forced President Rafiq Tara to resign. Musharraf finally became president of Pakistan. In 2002, the general elections restored democracy when the Musharraf-backed PMLQ formed a minority government. But protests against Musharraf grew until he resigned in an attempt to avoid impeachment in the parliament. Niger in 2023. In July 2023, member of Niger's presidential guard detained President Mohammed Bazoum inside his palace. They appeared on national television and announced that they were seizing power to end the deteriorating security situation and bad governance. Days later, the junta declared the head of the presidential guard, Abdul Rahman Etiani, the new head of state. The situation has raised concerns about the security of a region where Niger has been a key ally of Western powers fighting Al Qaeda and the Islamic State. The main West African bloc, ECOWAS, has been trying to negotiate with the coup leaders, but so far. with no success